Hi, welcome to this session on, on a networking review. Um, now, I want to make a note here that we're going to be discussing port scanning and other network security topics in the coming weeks. But in order to understand those, of course, you need networking. Uh, now, networking is a prerequisite for this course, but I know that a lot of people tend to forget things from their prerequisites. So this lecture is meant to be an overview of some basic networking type architecture, high level stuff. Uh, now this overview has a lot of simplifications. Uh, simplifications meaning that I've actually kind of made some things maybe slightly inaccurate from a purely formal point of view, but they're practically good enough. So let's start with a, a general overview of, of just routing and networking on the internet. So let's say that we have me, and I'm here at Qatar University, and there's computers at QU, there's laptops that connect through wireless uh, access points, and all of our traffic ultimately here at QU ends up at some router, which passes through some firewall that they have set up down at ITS, and then goes to the internet. Now somewhere else, let's say in California, we have Google. And so Google also has a firewall and more than one, but a whole bunch of routers, and then ultimately their servers. So if I want to actually send a packet of information from me at QU to Google, well, that packet goes from me through the router, through the firewall, through the internet, through Google's firewall, through Google's router, and down to Google's server. And if they want to reply, it'll go back the other way. So there's a whole bunch of different networking devices that sit on your network in order to route packets. And this is just meant to be a high-level overview. Hopefully nothing on this is shocking to anyone watching this video. So let's talk about some terminology in networking. First piece of terminology I want to make sure everybody knows is a packet. What's a packet? Well, it's just a chunk of data, uh, usually about 1,500 bytes or less, that's sent across the network. Uh, another piece of terminology would be a hardware or a MAC address. Now this is a 48-bit number that uniquely identifies a networked device. A network device could be a network card. Uh, we usually, it's usually associated with a network interface. So a network card, um, a cell phones, uh, any network interfaces on a cell phone would each have their own MAC address. Your wireless card on your laptop has its own MAC address. Um, yeah, they're associated with network interfaces. And they're assigned when the device is built, so they never change. So when the device is built, uh, a hardware or MAC address is stamped into it. And that MAC address is only ever used on the local network. So you never route packets on the global internet based on uh, trying to get to some specific MAC address. You, you always route packets based on a higher level IP address. But on your local network, uh, packets are routed based on MAC addresses. So another piece of terminology would be IP address, one I just used actually. An IP address is a unique 32-bit number, number identifying your computer on a network, uh, and specifically, when you're connected to the internet, identifying your computer on the internet. Uh, IP addresses can change often. Uh, so every time you connect to a different access point at QU, your IP address could change. Sometimes it'll change while you're connected. Um, so different places that you connect and different times you connect or whatever, your IP address will change. So the MAC address from the last slide is used for local routing and it never changes, but your IP address, which is used for global routing, can change kind of at a whim. Uh, and an IP address can be learned by computers on the wider network, or the internet, uh, whenever you're sending packets, because I put my IP address into packets so that, so that replies can come back to me. Another piece of terminology I want to look at is called a port. Not a very difficult word to talk about. Uh, the port is a 16-bit number identifying which application on a computer a packet is meant for. So if I'm sending a packet to Google's, to one of Google's servers, well, they need to know which application that packet is meant for. So I specify the IP address of the server and the port of the application. Uh, there's a number of ports that are assigned to specific server-side protocols. So for example, port 80 is HTTP. Uh, anytime you're in a web browser and you request an HTTP address, uh, your web browser makes a connection on port 80 to some web server somewhere. Uh, 443 is HTTPS, um, the secure version of HTTP. Uh, 22 is used for SSH, etc., etc. There's lots of already assigned ports. Uh, and those are just assigned and chosen by convention, and then we use them in practice. Okay, so now let's briefly discuss the concept of layers. 
So you may remember from your networking course that there's this idea that in networking there are seven layers. And so we formally teach seven layers and this is called the OSI model of networking. Now I'm here to tell you that the OSI model is a lie. Um, yeah, that's just, that's just the, the long and the short of it. The OSI model is a lie. It's not really true. There aren't really seven layers. We teach it that way because in theory the internet should have been built that way, but it wasn't. Don't tell your networking teacher that I told you that, and certainly don't write that on any of your networking exams that you take, but that's just kind of the truth. In practice, there's only four layers, not seven. Okay, so what are the four layers? Uh, the bottom layer is the link layer, and uh, that would be the ethernet or 802.11 or GSM, whatever the, the physical mechanism is for routing packets. That would be your link layer. Above that is the network layer, and the most common protocol in the network layer is IP, um, the internet protocol. Uh, above the network layer is the transport layer, which is where we define uh, what runs on top of the network layer. So things like TCP, UDP, ICMP, those are all transport layer protocols. And then on top of the transport layer, we have whatever application it is that you're running. So this is the four real layers of networking, link, network, transport, and application. So let's look at each one in a bit more detail. So the link layer is a header that's put on data to tell the packet where to go on the local network, because link layer networks are all local, relatively speaking. So the link layer could be things like 802.11, which would be the wireless standard that you use for Wi-Fi, um, GSM, 4G, et cetera, et cetera. Um, anything that involves uh, local routing. Uh, the link layer includes source and destination MAC addresses, usually, depending, I mean, it would vary a little bit depending on what you're dealing with, but for the most part, you're going to have source and destination MAC addresses in there. If you don't know the MAC address of the ultimate destination where the packet's supposed to go, then use the MAC address of the next hop router that you do know. So if I'm on a local network and I want to send a packet to Google, well, I don't put the MAC address of Google server on my link layer header because I don't know the MAC address of Google server. It's only used locally at Google. Instead, I just put the MAC address of the, of the nearest router, and that router is in charge of figuring out who's nearest to him to keep getting it closer and closer. So the next layer is the network layer. The network layer is a packet that, or is a, the network layer is a header to tell the packet where to go on the larger network. So the link layer is for the local network. The network layer is for the larger network, or in this case, the internet. IP is the main protocol used to this letter. There are a few others, but for the most part, they really aren't used anymore. IP is the main network layer uh, we're gonna see. Uh, the network layer includes the source and destination IP address and it's used to, to route packets ultimately to their destination on the internet. After the network layer comes the transport layer. Now the transport layer is used to, to dictate exactly how data is sent between applications. Um, so it's a header to tell the packet where it goes on a specific computer and a bit more information about how it's transported back and forth, but we'll get into that in future lectures. Um, TCP and UDP are the main protocols used at this layer. ICMP would be another one. Uh, and the transport layer typically, at least for TCP and UDP, includes the source and destination port of where this packet needs to go. So the last layer is the application layer. The application layer holds whatever data the application wants. So for example, in HTTP, this is requests and replies. So if, if I'm an HTTP um, client, like a web browser, I might, send a, I might connect to a server on port 80, and send a request like this, get slash HTTP slash 1.0, and I'd send this in the application layer. And the, the server might reply with the HTML web page that exists at that location, um, and all of that would be done in the application layer. Okay, so let's do an example here of sending a packet. So I've, I've horribly simplified even more my already simplified networking diagram. And what I'm going to have is I'm going to have me, and my computer's here at QU, and I've put down an IP address, so I've, made it, I've used a, an internet routable one here from my computer, and a MAC address for my computer. So next to me would be my router, right? And so my router also has an IP address, and it also has a MAC address. And then from the router, I'm going to send everything to the internet, and then on the other side, because I'm going to send a packet to Google, let's say we have Google's router here, 
and then we have Google's server set here. And uh, Google's router and Google's server would have MAC addresses, but I'm not going to include them in this diagram because I'm only concerned with sending my packet. And me on this side, I don't know the MAC address of someone on the other side of the internet. I only know the MAC address of devices local to me. But I might have Google.com and it might have an IP address of this right here. Okay, so if I'm going to send a packet, first thing I'm going to do is say, well, what kind of packet am I sending? The application layer, let's say I'm a web browser, and I'm going to send a get slash, you know, HTTP 1.0 request. So I'm just doing a normal request to Google to get a copy of a web page. So my, my application produces that data, and then it passes it down to the transport layer, which then says, well, this is going to be sent over TCP. So I'm going to append a source and a destination port. So in this case, the source port is usually randomly chosen on the client, and the destination port here would be port 80. 80 because that's the standard port for HTTP, and this is an HTTP request. Now, from the transport layer, my packet's going to be pushed down to the network layer, where another header is going to be added on, which would be the IP header. And I'm going to have my source IP address, which you can see is my IP address, and a destination IP address, which you can see is Google's IP address. So after the network layer, the packet gets pushed down again to the link layer. This is the last step before it gets transmitted onto the network. And at the link layer, I'm going to include my MAC address as a source. Now I've abbreviated it here just to make it fit on the screen. And I'm going to include my router's MAC address as the destination. Because even though the ultimate destination of the packet is Google, I don't know Google's MAC address. And so the link layer is used for local routing. So I'm going to send this packet to my router. So I put all these four headers on my packet, and I put it on the wire, and it goes to my router. Now the router reads the packet, processes, and looks at the destination IP, and makes a decision about who to send it to next. And when the router does that, it rewrites the link header to include the route itself, its own MAC address as the source, and the next hops MAC address as the destination. And that process continues on every router as the packet goes through the internet. The source and destination are rewritten so that they correspond to the next hop for the packet. And then ultimately, in the end, my packet comes out, gets to Google's router, Google's router rewrites it again to send it locally to one of the Google's web servers, and then finally the packet's received. And a reply would do this exact same process in reverse. So let's sum up this brief networking overview. Uh, there are four networking layers, the application layer, the transport layer, the network layer, and the link layer. In order for a packet to be routed to a specific service, the port, IP, and MAC address are ultimately used. The MAC address is only used for local routing and kind of next hop routing, whereas the port and IP address are used for, the glo are used for more global routing in order to get the packet to the right machine and to the right application on that machine. So that's all for now. Uh, in the next lecture, we'll talk a bit more about port scanning itself. Thanks.